Hello all. So, we are in unit 5 where we are talking about unsupervised machine learning algorithms. So, we have seen two important categories of unsupervised which is clustering and association. So, we were talking about clustering algorithms. We have seen three different types of clustering algorithms which was k-means clustering, which one was db scan and the third one was Gaussian mixture models. There is another important topic that we have to discuss when I talk about unsupervised machine learning algorithms which is dimensionality reduction. So, today in the session I would like to talk about what is dimensionality reduction and there is another concept than the dimensionality reduction which is called as curse of dimensionality. Okay. So, we will discuss the curse of dimensionality and the main approaches for dimensionality reduction. Okay. Basically, when we talk about machine learning model, okay, so we have rows and columns, the data is usually represented in rows and columns, a CSV file probably or an Excel file. Okay. So, the columns will have the features or the variables, whereas row will have the values or the instances, all of us know about this, right. So, if the number of the number of features or variables or columns present in the data set is known as dimensionality, okay. The column values or the features are called as dimensionality and the process of reducing these features is called as dimensionality reduction basically, okay. So, why do we need this? When we when we are working on a machine learning model which operates on huge data set which has more number of features, okay. So, when you have more number of features, it makes the predictive modeling task complicated because we are not able to decide on what are the actual parameters that I have to consider for prediction. Suppose when I go for house price prediction, say. Uh, you know, if uh, the house price is basically based on the locality, based on the square feet of the house, based on you know the number of bedrooms, etc. But there are some other important features like number of bathrooms, the wall texture, the construct, the builder, and all that details which are not required for prediction of house price. Okay, so such kind of input features will actually complicate the task for prediction. So in that case, we try to re reduce those features. Okay, and that process is called as dimensionality reduction. Okay, uh, it is very difficult to visualize more uh, and make predictions uh, for the training data set if you have more number of features. For such case, when you have more number of input features in any given data set, we go for dimensionality reduction. Okay, so basically, dimensionality reduction is a technique we use to reduce the number of features in the data set. Now, when I say reducing the number, it should not affect the performance. Okay. So, reducing the number of features while retaining as much as the important information possible. We are not supposed to remove the features which will actually make us lose the information. Retaining the important information, we are supposed to reduce the features by adopting different dimensionality reduction techniques. Okay. In other words, it is simply a process of transforming the high dimensional data into low dimensional space that still preserves the essence of its original data. Okay. Look at this. I want to reduce the model number features, but I want to retain the model performance. Okay. So, when you talk about this in machine learning, when I talk about high dimensional data, it refers to the data set with large number of features or variables. Okay. So, the curse of dimensionality is a common problem in machine learning when you try to reduce the number of features. Okay. So, as the feature increases, features increases, uh, the model detroits the performance. So, that condition is called as curse of dimensionality. Okay. This is because the complexity of the model increases with the number of features and it becomes more difficult to find a good solution. Okay. So, this is a high dimensional uh, uh, data. So, which I am dividing it into low dimensional data. Okay. So, I am dividing that 3D data into only two part of the data that is 2D or 1D. Okay. Now, when I talk about approaches for dimensionality reduction, we usually have different approaches for dimensionality reduction and the most important ones are the first two ones. Okay. So, principal component analysis, of course, all of them has its own uh, approach or uh, own method we choose for reducing the dimensions, we will discuss that later. This will have a list of them. Principal component analysis, PCA is one dimensionality reduction technique, linear discriminant analysis, LDA is another principal uh, dimensionality reduction technique, TSNE, T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding is third dimensionality reduction technique, okay, UMAP, uniform manifold approximation and projection, auto encoders and then finally, we have different feature selection techniques which we use for reducing the dimensions in a given data set. Let us see about each one of them in short. When I talk about PCA, it is basically a linear technique. 
that operates on linear data. And the reason why we use PCA is we try to project data onto a set of new axes. Okay, we are trying to reduce the data, right? 3D into 2D or 1D. That is, we are trying to project the data into the new axis, which is called as principal components. Okay, so uh, this principal components will actually capture the maximum variance in the data. Okay, so that is the purpose of PCA. When I talk about how it works, uh, PCA will actually compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors from the covariance matrix of the data and the principal components that is the new axis projected from the data are the directions where the data has the most variance and retain the top components based on the explained variance. Okay. So, I am calculating my variance from the principal components and I also calculate the covariance from the eigenvalues and eigenvectors which I am computing. Okay. This is a simple uh, method which is called as PCA. Okay. And next we have another method for dimensionality reduction which is called as linear discriminant analysis. This is also a linear technique. This reduces dimensions while preserving the class separability. When you go for classification task, we use uh, linear discriminant analysis. Okay. Now, uh, linear LDA works simply by you know uh, maximizing the ratio between class variance within the class variance. Okay. Uh, it projects the data onto the new space that actually discriminates the best between all the classes that are available in the classification process. Okay. So, as you can see this is PCA and this is LDA. So, LDA as I told you we use basically for classification. We have good projection or separation between two different classes whereas principal component analysis we try to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors which actually discriminates between different data points within the class okay from one class itself will try to differentiate between the data points here it is basically used for classification where we have two different types of data points getting separated into different classes okay the third one is t distributed stochastic neighbor embedding tsne which is in short called as okay this is a nonlinear technique lda and pc are both linear techniques but when you talk about nonlinear data we will be using uh, t distributed stochastic neighbor embedding technique okay so this visualizes uh, this visualizes uh, you know high dimensional data by mapping it to 2d or 3d while preserving the local relationship so when you talk about probability distribution of measures or similarity between points in very high dimensional data Data to very low dimensional data, we will be using TSNE model. Okay. And third one, and the fourth one is uniform manifold approximation and projection UMAP techniques. Okay. This is also a nonlinear technique. Similar to TSNE, even this is also nonlinear, this is also faster, which preserves both global and local architectures within that particular data. Uh, here, when you talk about uniform map manifold projection, we basically take graphs into consideration, which represents the data into high dimensional structure and optimizes it into low direction, low dimensional embedding graphs. Okay. And the fifth one is autoencoders. So, this is also non-linear techniques, but autoencoders are neural network based. When we talk about advanced machine learning, that is deep learning, we will be making use of autoencoders. Usually, we do not use autoencoders in the concept of machine learning, but in the context of deep learning for dimensionality reduction, we will be making use of uh, autoencoders. Okay. So, it learns a compressed lower dimension representation of the input data, that is encoders actually compresses the data and then decoders we have uh, which will reconstruct the data. So, encoder decoder type architectures are nothing but your autoencoders. And next we have some feature selection techniques that is the statistical methods that we use which can be applied for both supervised and machine learning and unsupervised machine learning algorithms. So, these are actually uh, this will actually select subsets of uh, you know relevant features or patterns that is that has been identified in the data without transforming the data. So, we have different types of feature selection examples. We have correlation, mutual information in filter methods. We use recursive func feature elimination using wrapper methods. We have different embedded methods where we use model training like you know uh, lasso regression. Okay. So, we use different regression techniques for embedding methods. Okay. So, these six are the basic techniques that we use for dimensionality reduction. PCA, principal component analysis, LDA, linear discriminant analysis, TSNA, T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding, UMAP, uniform manifold approximation projection. We also have autoencoders for deep learning techniques. We also have feature selection techniques and the feature selection techniques again we have uh, wrapper methods, filter methods and embedding methods.
okay now when do we choose each one of them is again an important point so when we talk about visualization of the data as i told you tsna and u mapper for non linear techniques okay so when you want to visualize uh, graphs or mapping methods between the data on non linear uh, 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 non linear data we go for tsna and u map methods for classification as i told you we uh, go for ld and pca if it is unsupervised we specially prefer pca and when you have large data set that is deep learning when we work on more advanced data sets we go for auto encoders or even mapping u map or feature selection okay when you want to preserve the original feature selection uh, i mean features without disturbing any of it we go for feature set feature selection methods okay now when i talk about dimensionality reduction okay just understand that reducing the number of features without removing or without getting the information lost is nothing but uh, dimensionality reduction but when we do this we have a problem which occurs which is called as curse of dimensionality okay so curse of dimensionality basically uh, you know uh, arises when we work with high dimensional data leading to increased computational complexity overfitting and other extra problems okay so now we use different techniques like as i as we have discussed we use dimensionality reduction feature selection careful model design for mitigating the problems of curse of dimensionality okay so basically understand that curse of dimensionality is a phenomenon where the efficiency and the effectiveness of the model when i talk about model a machine learning algorithm detroits as the dimensionality of the data increases exponentially when it increases we have to reduce them wherein we get this problem which is called as curse of dimensionality now how do we overcome this okay not just understanding what is question of curse of dimensionality but how do we actually overcome this in real time okay so if you uh, we have two important strategies one is dimensionality reduction as we have already seen what is feature selection what is feature extraction so when i talk about feature extraction we use pca lda tsna okay so feature selection we have different feature selection techniques like you know wrapper methods embedding methods we use them for feature selection so this is one option and the second option is you can also pre process the data to avoid uh, or to reduce curse of dimensionality when i talk about uh, uh, pre processing normalization comes into picture handing missing values comes into picture which we have been seeing uh, every now and then when we talk about developing a model okay so this is all about what is dimensionality reduction and what is curse of dimensionality thank you